as we know, since years, there is no one-to-one -one correlation between loop demand on the one side and GDP development on the other side. We know that loop demand tracks GDP growth, however, in wider swings. But uh, it's interesting what we have seen during the analysis of the loop market in 2015. We just completed uh, the market analysis in our intelligence department. The market stagnated on the level of 2014. And interestingly, growth rates above 1% on volume growth occurred in the Middle East and Africa, while Asia Pacific, for the first time since years, had growth, but below 1%. We saw stagnating markets in Western Europe and North America and huge declines in Central Eastern Europe and Latin America, of course, closely related to the development of Brazil and Russia. So here we see there is, in fact, some kind of connection between GDP and loop demand. If you think of China, where the GDP growth came down and Chinese loop demand slightly increased by 0.8%, we believe, in the past year. At Fuchs Competitive Intelligence, we identified, I would say, six current trends re with regard to the competitive landscape in these days. And I could briefly name them to you if you want. The first trend I would call um, retraction from niches, if you want to say in this way. The big major oil companies of the old world with loops businesses connected retracted from, on the one side, niches, but also for some companies, the loop business as a whole, per se, is a niche. And if you think of examples like Shell some years ago, uh, um, selling the food grade loops business, by the way, to a company called Fuchs. Number two, big other companies like, for instance, ExxonMobil, sold their loop assets in UK and South America to companies like Cosan, for instance. And here I come to the second driving force, which uh, we identified new companies entering the market scene like Cosan, the biggest sugar and ethanol producer, which was not related to the loops industry many years ago, bought these assets. A third trend is, for instance, a restructuring of majors. We have seen that many major loop companies put up their loop business as standalone units. If you think of Gulf Oil or Pertamina, a fourth trend would be so-called globalization, if you think of uh, Chinese companies like PetroChina or Luke Oil or SK, they are not only now big in their home markets, but they also go global and they become stronger on the home market. So the globalization could also be called a globalization. Fifth trend I would call is um, a trend with uh, regard to private equity. I mean, there is private equity coming in, big equity funds like Warren Buffett buying uh, uh, companies like Philips 66. And so let's make it five. There are a lot of other trends. So there is a lot of movement in the competitive landscape, chances for independent blenders, but also fiercer competition. It's interesting you're asking me on sustainability because uh, quite frankly speaking, in preparing for the chairing of this conference tomorrow and uh, for the moderation, and also because it's the 20th anniversary of uh, the ISIS conference, actually I went back in time uh, to see what was going on in the past 20 years and I found a presentation 17 years ago in 1999. In fact, I think I even have it with me, if you bear for me for a, for a second. Yeah, it was a presentation in 1999 called Environment sustainability in the base oils industry and my point is actually um, if we're honest to ourselves what has changed with regard to sustainability in the past 17 years the word is still used in an inflationary way there is a lot of greenwashing and we developed the Fuchs sustainability management five years ago because we think it's not going to go away we cannot sit this out what does it actually mean for a company to be sustainable certainly it means to grow profits, economic profitability needs to increase, certainly. It needs to be social responsibility, certainly. What do we do for our employees and for the society? But the true sustainability comes in the ecological sense. Our products, the DNA of every loop company, the products need to be sustainable. When is a loop product really sustainable? We are trying to measure this and we are trying to put some value to this because we believe what you cannot measure you cannot manage and what you cannot manage you cannot optimize and true sustainability cannot be done or accomplished by one company alone it's an industry effort so we are moving on and we are working on this